10 meters. Yeah, okay, well, it's definitely working. And uh, well, I wouldn't worry about raising up your vertical there. It sounds pretty darn good. You know, that always gets me. You know, uh, uh, guys, uh, a lot of guys, only, you know, they want to put up an antenna and they're worried about, oh, is it straight, is this and that. Hey, I'll tell you what, some of the screwiest antennas I've put up in the goofy configure, uh, configurations work the best, over. Our RX TX uh, receiver RF amplifier TX3 driver got a BFR 106 in there. You can see it there right on the board. That layout seems to work okay. I did have to put a 50 ohm resistor right there because uh, it was taken, taken off. But putting that load on it uh, sure tamed things down. So we'll have to see how that's going to impact uh, our, our overall performance once we get uh, yeah, there. I've got a, a buddy of mine now. He's uh, he's always experimenting with antennas. He does all these calculations. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Puts things up. And the display might be right, but the, I think the BFO is you okay. Know, and, uh, I always tell him, man, I just throw it up in the air, and if it works, I leave it there, and if it don't, I just take it down, put something else up. But uh, I don't get too critical. <laughs> Uh, but hey, that's what I guess that's what AM Man, that's, that's, all that's about. a real you simple a RF amplifier. If it works great. If it don't, well, try something different. Hey, that's like we used to have a Voice of America station up the road from here, Paul. And one of the guys that was an engineer there was a ham operator. They had this giant Sturba curtain. This thing was huge. It was made about the size of about four football fields. Well, I'll tell you, it was like monstrous. In fact, uh, you know, that day they, uh, they weren't transmitting, so we got to go out in the field. And it was a pretty good walk. And uh, when we got out there, Look, oh it's going to be okay. Huge. I mean, they had 90 foot 10 meters. Holes. Uh, spliced end to end to hold the upper section and it had a tuning stub on it the thing was about 40 feet long it looked like it was made out of like a two inch copper tubing over 10 meters on the new 10 meters single sideband transceiver pete here n6qw making a little progress here glad to see that People that lived in the area said that um, they could get voltage readings off of their gutters and downspouts. You know, you couldn't feel them, but uh, you put a you put a VOM on it, you could you could actually get a meter reading. But uh, yeah, he said uh, the electric bill was uh, five thousand dollars a month. Over the meter bandpass filter, right there. All trimmers except the one peak of fatter is just a gimmick. Yeah, I'll tell you but the nice thing about it, like in the basement here where it's cool, in the winter time my amp uh, works as a nice uh, outboard heater. It really heats up the ham shack. They had antennas all over the place. So uh, when VOA finally decommissioned it, Sounds good. They took all the antennas down. They sold off the property um, to the community, and they've got, like, soccer fields and baseball fields now. But they kept the building, and they donated that to one of the local ham radio clubs here. So it's their clubhouse. And uh, they even left some of the old transfer stuff there, you know, so they could put it on display. 
Yeah, it was crazy. They had uh, old transmitters which were Crosley, and the new transmitters were, uh, oh, what the heck were they, uh, Collins. And what I went up there is that the Collins was laying in the, on the floor in pieces, and the old, uh, uh, the old uh, Crosley was just running uh, Peter in 6QW, Ski Tango 8, Oscar Mike, WTAOM was the station, so he's in Ohio, I guess, or Michigan. Not bad, he's running 500 watts, it's the West Coast. <laughs> 